Hello there. Once again, this is Chris Paco, writer, director, of the projectionist. For the, that's me there holding the camera. Um, this is obviously the split screen version of the film. Um, we shot this just to show you, you know, how things were done, and also for uh, all the haters <laughs> who think that we didn't do it in one shot, just to prove we did. Um, this is uh, in the background there, the guy in the red shirt, that's Adam Carter. He was the stunt hands. He uh, switched in for the projectionist for some of the uh, the stuff so th he could run from scene to scene. Um, so you can see the two guys holding the bed up back there. They're holding it so they could lean against it so it looks more like they're laying down. And also if you see in the, in the, uh, in the actual film, there's the, the lamp there that was screwed in and that piece of wall is being held up by someone so it could just get slid out of the way sick like right there it just kind of slides out of the way and yeah bed comes out move the stuff they were standing on and uh the person in the far right hand side leaning down looking extremely tired that's sam dan elliott he did the lights for the projectionist he's the dp and uh one thing we didn't have here's the bed rolling past us was a, a like a dimming board or anything so when all the lights are going on and off they're unplugging and plugging in these lights um like right here he, he's unplugging some lights boom plugs that turns them on um so while they're in their scene here what they're doing is they're rolling the the living room back in and they're moving this shelf across the 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 booth so when we pan over, we go past all those shelves, or all those uh, film cans. Just to give you a, a discombobulation, if you never really know where you are in the booth, because everything's moving around, so you think, oh, when I turn left, I'm going to be back into this uh, you know, kitchen scene, for instance. But next time you're in the kitchen, it's on the uh, totally other side, and you've seen so many other things in between, you don't really know where you are. Um... <laughs> So here's Adam again. We use this uh, orange reel as kind of like a, a transition. It passes in front. <laughs> Sam. It, see, it passes in front, and that allows us to come over here to the makeup table where Adam's hands are here. He's switching everything over. Wellen comes in, boom, picks it up. We follow his hands up to his face. And so while he's doing this, we are moving over this entire kitchen thing because the siding on the other side of it is the uh, insulation part for the bathroom when you look through it. And they're bringing all this stuff through and it's happening right three feet away and they're daisy chaining all these film cans. And he comes and sits down, they click on the, click on the projector there. It's a digital projector. And all those names there you see are my grade 8 graduating class, um, all the bands I've been in since high school, and then a couple guys from bands uh, that I looked up to while I was in high school. <laughs> and see how, see how they move the makeup table over there. So when, next time we go to it, you think, oh, we're just going to turn to the right when we start panning that way. And that's where the makeup table will be. But what they do is... Or what they did is now, now they're set, they set up that shelf that used to be on the other side of the theater or the other side of the projection booth. So when we turn to the right, you don't see the makeup table. You see these things. And it also allows uh, the actor more time to get over there to set it up. And so, yeah, like I said earlier, this all the sound we couldn't use quite obviously. Look, I look like a pregnant woman there. Jesus, God. But, uh, okay, where it goes black right there, that's the one place I think people think we cut it. And that was something that was suggested by the Steadicam operator who we had originally, who kept saying we need a place to cut this because we uh, we just wouldn't be able to do it. Or would, wouldn't we rather have a film put together through cuts than one shot? For me, honestly, it's no. I would have rather had the, no film than a film put together in cuts because we put so much into this. So here's the thing where this whole kitchen scene has to get moved from one side of the booth to the other side of the booth. Uh, and the, that set is as wide as the booth is. And it, the fact there's hammering going on, people talking, and they're still doing their acting and just not ever letting it affect their performance is something that uh, 
still blows my mind because I was looking through the camera, right? So I didn't really know. I knew what was going on behind me, but I didn't know how intense it really was. It's like ants on a, you know, an anthill or something. Everyone had a job. Everyone did it perfectly. Everyone really nailed it. Everybody you see on the right hand screen is amazing. You know, they, none of them got paid. They got paid in, like I said in the other commentary, uh, pulled pork sandwiches. That's Johnny there getting ready to throw the shirt on Kurt. And that's uh, Chris Holland down there with his, his hands are on the, uh, the plug to unplug the lights when we get out of this scene. Um, but yeah, I was saying they worked for pulled pork sandwiches that made everybody crap <laughs> like crazy, which is something I really helped everybody out, I'm sure. Um, Terry is zip, puts on the shirt, and then uh, I kind of think we linger on there too long. We probably shot Adam's stunt hands in there doing something, but, you know, what can you do? But anyway. Um, so this is one part where we do go past the... There's Stacy actually changing. She had enormous costume changes to do in such little time. Like, here she is went from that dress kind of thing looking really nice now she has to look like in her sweats and stuff see when he sits down here you don't see it on camera the picture behind them falls off and right there he's in the right hand side there or left hand side he's holding the picture up with his hand and you see how he's smearing it down it was double-sided tape and he's trying to stick the picture back up to, to keep it going and i had no idea about that and here they are again moving that and getting everything ready to be kind of a discombobulated when we go back in that direction but i had no idea that had happened until after the the take like actually like days later someone told me about that and i thought that was amazing that uh he could just hold it together like that and it didn't affect anything unreal so here's <laughs> you know when we got to this point in the script it was kind of a a big deal or like in the shoot i mean because it was kind of like oh my god we're beyond the halfway point you know and then this break here, you don't see it actually on the other side, but um, it worked awesome. They really had to pull those things. There's like three or four people pulling on ropes to make sure those things broke apart perfectly. Um, and the, the television screen that you're looking through is just like two pieces of wood put together. And then when I break through it, they pop them apart and, uh, you know, just kind of slide through it like that. It really worked out nicely, actually. I got the idea of doing the, uh, the credits with the projector rather than add them in post was I didn't want to do anything with the computer in this film although it's shot digitally uh, I didn't want to add anything I didn't want to clean anything up I didn't want anything like that to really affect anything and here she is just zoom gets that jacket on just in time and you know looks completely different than she did in the other scene and that is the one place you do see a light and we kind of tuck in right there but it's one shot back off <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, I wanted it to be, you know, everything on set. And as you can see, as another example, in the side there's Chris Holland getting ready to plug in lights and unplug lights. He has to do them both at the same time. Uh, just because, yeah, that's the only way we could do it. We didn't have enough plugs. We couldn't run enough power into these things. We don't want to shut down the, you know, blow a circuit in this booth. It was kind of old and everything. So it was very, uh, I don't know very independent filmmaking is how it felt and that's what i loved about it you know everyone was in there no one was kind of sitting back everyone had a job to do and was stoked about doing that job it's like okay like here in the front this guy here's got to throw that the pajamas on him that'll get ripped right off kind of thing and he was also another guy who dressed him and stuff but he was never like oh man why am i the guy that has to just you know put these clothes on him he really you know held his own one person who you don't see in this who's integral to this whole operation is uh, Glenn Hogarth. He's actually shooting the behind-the-scenes footage right here. And um, he, uh, this film really wouldn't... It took two years to kind of get my shit together, and my shit got together because he kind of uh, came in control of my shit and really knew what to do and really got it going. So I just wanted to give a, a big shout-out to him. This is what the audience... So here comes Adam's hands in, and Kurt's putting that thing on. They had to drop the uh, the siding down there. You can see on the very bottom of the screen, well, there's Stacy's head. And they had to drop that. So when we turn around, 
that way and you just see the kitchen scene you don't see the uh the siding or anything adam skips out of the way and then we kind of come in there you see some legs there but you know shit but yeah and see so for this one people are always like oh well i know they're already standing up and we're supposed to have a ceiling fan whipping by but we just couldn't fit it in or whatever but be like oh i know they're standing up this time it's like yeah we're not trying to sell that they're laying down we're trying to sell that they're you know you know that you think you know the gag and then zing we drop it off like that and it's kind of like oh neat and the bed just kind of rolls out of the way and this part here was kind of ecstatic because it's like holy shit we just have to get to the other side of the booth not trip over anything and we're done you know what i mean and it was just kind of one thing you can see here is this reel isn't spinning and uh you see johnny one of our guys come running in right here turns it on and it as it picks up it kind of snakes it just as we kind of pass by it and it kind of you know works out nice you know and uh, just i can't say enough about the performance here you know from wellen jackson he uh it's essentially a 13 minute monologue or an 11 minute monologue with so much noise going on behind him or in front of him so many things moving you know costume changes i guess he didn't really have costume changes but set changes things on the fly you know it's just really something that i never really never really understood how much i had to deal with until i saw the behind the scenes thing and saw how much was going on behind me and i was really just like holy shit and this part here was kind of that was you know unbelievable this was you know i may have already said this was the very last take that we did at night at actually this point here it's 11 30 in the morning we started uh crew call was eight o'clock the night before you know so it's 11 in the morning here the theater is now open like there's people in the seats in some of these theaters uh and the, the the projectionist who worked there, her name was Mariah. She was waiting outside the doors, which is behind the kitchen side. She couldn't. She literally couldn't get in, um, because you know we just wanted to get this one last take, because we knew we could pull it off. And see exactly and we just really kind of powered through it and so she came in and then myself and adam carter the stunt hands who's also a projectionist we helped her get all get everything ready to go and <laughs> because we went way way over and oh god this was the, this part here's like all right we're done but then there was like you know in our four hours of cleanup and then in our three days of getting everything out of here we had to break all the sets down it was just like you know, that's how it goes. It's like these sets, which, you know, are really great sets made by Sam Dan Elliott and uh, Pam Condotta, actually. They put these things together. Some of them, like the kitchen set, they put together. And this sums up the night right here as well. Well, I took four poos <laughs> in the span of 13 hours. That's all you need <laughs> That's really it. Like I tell you, the pork, pulled pork sandwiches go right through you. Um... But yeah, it was fantastic that we actually got it done. It worked out pretty good. And thank you, everyone.